Okay, in this video we are going to do some Lagrange multipliers. It'll be a three variable, one constraint problem. So specifically we're going to work on f of xyz is equal to 3x plus 6y plus 2z. And our constraint will be 2x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared equals 70. So if you've done a lot with these sorts of things, which you probably haven't, but um, if you've thought about it, the constraint that we're dealing with is an ellipsoid, which is kind of like an M&M. &M. Um, and then our function, f of xyz, 3x plus 6y plus 2z. Think about letting f be a constant. So you get 3x plus 2y, sorry, 3x plus 6y plus 2z is equal to a constant. That's actually just a plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a plane and we're going to just pass it through this M&M. And, &M. and we can't tilt the plane, but what we can do is we can move it like up and down. And what we're trying to figure out is as we take this plane that is like stuck, it's rigid at some particular angle, and we move it up and down, what's like the lowest value where we'll hit the M&M &M, and what's the highest value where we'll hit the M&M? &M? So that's kind of, in my mind, the visual of what I'm trying to do. Um, let's talk about what we need to do. Uh, this is actually the third video I've done for Lagrange multipliers. Uh, I'm gonna link the playlist in the description um, or maybe like a thing you could click right now. Um, where I go into a little more depth on like why you need to know these things, but I'm just gonna kind of spit them out here. Things you need to know. Uh, you need a function that you're gonna optimize. So that's our plane type of deal. Uh, F of X, Y, Z in this case, and we're gonna find the maximum minimum of that thing given the constraint curve. So the constraint curve is G of X, Y, Z, um, and that'll equal zero, like for the technical, like when you're working on this, um, practically, uh, for practical purposes, it doesn't really matter because you just need to find partial x, partial y, partial z of the constraint. But anyway, move everything to one side, set it equal to zero uh, to be formal about it. Uh, we're going to solve the system uh, gradient of f equals lambda gradient of g and g of x, y, z equals zero, which means we have four variables, x, y, z, and lambda, but we also have four equations. So four equations and four unknowns. The equation everyone always forgets is g of x, y, z equals zero. Um, oh, I forgot to write z there. Um, so we'll have partial x equals lambda partial x, partial y equals lambda partial y, partial z equals lambda partial z, and then g of x, y, z, which I forgot to write, equals zero. All right, let's do the problem. So here it is. We need to figure out what g of x, y, z is. So we're gonna take 70, move it over. So g of x, y, z is two x squared plus four y squared plus z squared minus 70, and then that must just equal zero because we moved it over. So that's our constraint curve. And then uh, we're going to find the gradients. So the gradient of f is actually really nice in this case because um, f is 3x plus 6y plus 2z. It's like three things. Each of them only has x, y, or z. So partial x is just three because only 3x has an x in it. Partial y is just six for the same reason, and partial z is just two. So that's really nice because um, if you get constants, it tends to make life a little easier. Uh, so we'll find the gradient of g, which is like not any worse, but it's a little worse because they're not constant. Um, but they kind of had to be not constant for this to, well, it's fine. Uh, all right, so partial x, the only thing that has an x is two x squared, so it'll be four x. Partial y, the only y thing is 4y squared, so we'll get 8y. Partial z, the only z thing is z squared, so we get 2z. All right, those are our gradients. And now what we wanna do is just think how we set this up. So I usually write this out somewhere, um, or I'll just write the system, I don't know, it depends on how good I want my work to look. You should want your uh, work to look good. So our setup, we want the gradient of f to equal lambda times the gradient of g. And then we also know that g of x, y, z will equal zero. So that's gonna end up giving us four equations in four unknowns. So our system, when we actually write it out, is partial x equals lambda partial x, partial y, which is six, equals lambda partial y, so lambda eight y, partial z is two equals lambda partial z, so two equals lambda two z. Um, and then finally, g of x, y equals zero. I like to go back to the beginning, uh, g of x, y, z. I just don't like putting z in that constraint. Um, so we get 2x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared is gonna have to equal 70. 
And that's the thing that's gonna let us go and actually like find values. Otherwise, we're just floundering around. We kind of do have too many unknowns um, because of the lambda. All right, so now we wanna solve. So solving systems like this, uh, usually it's like either pretty easy or really hard. In this case, it's not that bad. So what I'm gonna do is each of those things is equal to, uh, has a lambda in it. So I'm gonna set all of those equal to lambda. So everything that has a lambda, I'm working with that. So I'm gonna say lambda is equal to, so for the first one, I'll get three over four X. But lambda is also equal to, from the second one, six over eight Y, which I'll make three over four Y. And if you just kind of look at that, you can tell that like Y has to equal X. Um, and then from the third thing, uh, lambda, so two equals lambda times two Z, so lambda equals one over Z, or two over two Z, but let's simplify. Okay, so combining just the first two, I'm gonna get that, this always, so just to pause and tell me tell you something this kind of reminds me of, it reminds me of two things. One, um, when you have like parametric equations and you change them into the symmetric equations, you like solve everything for T and then set them equal to each other. It feels very similar to that. Um, also, like it, right now, it kind of feels like the law of sines where you like pick two and work with it. But anyway, uh, from the first two, you get that y equals x. From, uh, I'm gonna use the second two. So three over four y equals one over z. Uh, from that, I get that z is equal to four y over three. But since I know that y is equal to x, so your goal is kind of to work it down so that you get, um, usually I try to write everything in terms of x because like, uh, algebra kind of like bashed that into my head. So uh, I know that, I know x is equal to x. I worked out that y is equal to x. So if I can write z in terms of x, then I can take my constraint curve and rewrite the entire thing in terms of x, kind of my goal. If it's easier to do that with y, do it. If it's easier to do it with z, do it. It doesn't matter which one you find first. Um, but I now I'm going to find my points. So I know that I have this constraint curve and um, I know that x is just equal to x, right? So it's two x squared. Uh, to deal with y, I'm gonna have four, and then it's gonna be uh, x squared because y is equal to x. And then for z squared, it's gonna be the quantity four x over three squared. So it's just substitution uh, where we had to like work and figure out what is y in terms of x, what is z in terms of x, and then substitute. And then all of this equals 70, which is like a super suspicious number this is either gonna work or be terrible. Um, so two x squared and four x squared is six x squared, and then 16 x squared over nine. I'm gonna do that in two steps, I guess. Um, nine times six is 54, plus 10 is 64, plus six is 70. So I actually have 70 x squared over nine, and that's amazing, because I'm gonna divide both sides by 70 and multiply by nine and get x squared is nine, which means that x is plus or minus three. All right, if X is plus or minus three, I wanna go back to, um, actually, so I'm in my mind, I'm thinking because two constraints, you usually go back to the, uh, the constraint curve. I'm sorry, two variables, one constraint, you usually go back to the constraint curve for this. I actually wanna go back to um, these relationships I found, right, where um, I have Y is equal to X, and then I have uh, Z is equal to four X over three. So if X is equal to three, I know that Y is equal to three. And if x is equal to three, I know that z is equal to four. So I get one point out of that, which I was kind of expecting, because if you think about that ellipsoid, the M and M, and you're gonna like take a plane that uh, is at a fixed angle, and you're gonna, you know, touch the M and M in two places, um, I'm expecting to only get two answers out of this. I'm not expecting to get more than that. Um, and then when x is negative three, you get kind of the reverse. You get y is equal to negative three because y is equal to x. And then you get z is equal to negative four because z is equal to four times x over three. So that gives me one more point. So negative three, negative three, and negative four. All right, and now we're just gonna test those in the function. I think one of them is gonna give me the maximum and one will give me the minimum value of the function given the constraint. So let's see. So f of three, three, four is, um, so three times three is nine, six times three is 18, four times two is eight. Add those up, we get 35. 
And then f of uh, negative 3, negative 3, negative 4 is actually just the negative of that because there's nothing really funny going on. Um, so it's just negative 35. So the maximum value of the function, given the constraint, is 35. That's the biggest value you could possibly get out of it, provided that constraint curve, or yeah, constraint. And then the minimum is negative 35. Um, and that's it, right? So you just go through the process, you stay calm the entire way, be neat and organized, and you will get the answers. All right, so I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.